How's it going, everybody? My name is Alex Castellanos, and I am a learning tech tutor here at the college. And today we are going to be working with getting organized Google Part 2. And this video is just going to be showing off uh, ways to organize your Google Drive better as students and as faculty as well. And then some tips and tricks about using Google Docs. And um, I'll delve a little bit into Excel. So let's just get started here. And what you're going to want to do is go into your Google Drive. And one of the first things I recommend doing for people is if you go to my drive is to create folders and folders just help you organize all your files better so you don't have everything all over the place instead you're able to uh, put everything into individual portions uh, to create a folder all you have to do is say new and then folder and then just give it a name i'll call this test folder just because we're showing it and now i have this folder uh, folder here and when it comes to that now that I have this folder, I have assignments I want to put into it. Uh, you can just click and drag assignments into the folder. And then from there, all the assignments get in there. And the, the biggest reason why folders help so much is that before Google Drive, uh, documents, sheets, and slides tend to pile up immensely. So folders help you divide that better. I personally recommend making them into uh, your classes. For example, I have my internship, I have my math class, I have my software quality assurance class. And then from there, I also add a little thing called personal and other. And personal to me is just stuff that's not related to classes, but I've been working on. And then others just older documents that I don't want to delete just yet, but uh, they just don't have a place currently with what I'm working on. And once you've created your folders and have everything set up how you want it, uh, I'm gonna recommend going into your priority. And then from priority, you can do workspaces down here and workspaces let you organize all the documents you have uh, similar to folders into specific sections, except now you can have documents related to a specific thing. For example, all my internship work I have in one workspace here. So any files I work on from the internship or any related files I will just put in there. So I have everything I can work on ready in there. And to make a workspace, you just hit create. We'll call this Test workspace as well. And now I have a workspace. And what you can do now is say add files, and it lets you add any files from your drive. So I'll go into my drive, and let's say that test folder I have, we'll open that up, and I can click these files, select it two. You can select one at a time, and you can say insert, and now both those files are here. And then once I have all my files I want for the workspace, I hit done. And there you go. Now you have a workspace. Um, when it comes to workspaces, I recommend making one for each class as well, just because you have everything even more organized. So you have documents put in a certain folder. And then from that folder, you have a workspace. So you kind of just have like a mini drive to work on everything. And now going back to my drive, we're going to show you this feature here. Uh, if you've noticed, we have little stars everywhere. So similar to uh, putting a star on an email, you can do that with your files as well. So if you go to your file, right click, you can say add to starred. And you can actually start individual folders as well. And this just shows what's a priority and what's not a priority. So I start all my classes and personal stuff beforehand and then anything you star you're able to actually go down to this start section here open that up and now all your important files uh folders are here and that just makes it easier for you to like organize stuff like okay things that are really important to me that i'm going to be working on frequently or want to keep tabs on i'll star them and have them saved up here and then before i delve any deeper we're going to go back to priority quick and one thing I recommend people do is if you go to your settings and go to general, it's going to go to suggestions down here. And one of the suggestions is making priority your default home page. Uh, normally, it's actually unclicked. So I recommend clicking on that and hitting done. And what that does is now anytime you open your Google Drive from anywhere, uh, your priority tab is going to be the first one up instead of the My Drive or Share Drives. And making priority your main one's really useful because it shows all the files you've worked on most recently. And also all your workspaces are there as well. So the moment you open up your drive, that's exactly what you're gonna see. And it works really well. 
And then another thing, if you're struggling to find certain documents and stuff, you can actually go into your search drive and you can search documents by type down here. Like oh, I'm looking for a doc, I'm looking for a spreadsheet, uh, presentation, video, PDF. And you can also search it by individual people. So you can find out, oh, I'm looking for this document that I shared with this one person, but I can't find anywhere. I'll search their name and I'll show any document they're related to. And if you go into advanced search or click these tabs here as well, you can delve deeper into finding the type of document, who owns it, uh, where do you think the document is, is it in the trash, did you star it, um, last time you think it was modified, and even like names on the document, what words can be found in there and stuff. So this is just a really interesting, good way to find old work stuff that you uh, have forgotten about. And you're like, okay, let me just find that again so I can store it properly. And yeah, that's about it when it comes to organizing your Google Drive. And now we're going to move on to Google Docs. All right. And now we're here at Google Docs. And with this, I'm just going to go into some tips and tricks to uh, utilize Google Docs a little better. So one of the first things I want to show off here is going into the template gallery. And what I really recommend with this is a lot of people tend to always open Google Docs, make a new document, blank document, and start and start from scratch but they have no idea where they should start with, especially when they're writing like, say a formal paper, report, or any other type of document. So I always recommend going to the template gallery. And if you're part of the school, you're gonna have two tabs here. I recommend going into general. And then from there, just looking at the different types of templates they have set up. They have some for uh, business letters, they have resumes, reports, uh, book reports, stuff like that, the different formats, such as like, uh, report MLA, report APA 6th edition, uh, paperback essay, playful essay, stuff like that. So I always recommend checking that out to see if you're starting fresh with something, looking for a template, using that to make, uh, have a base for your paper. Then we'll leave that here and go into a blank document. And from a blank document, we're going to actually look at a few things. So another thing I want to bring up is add-ons. Uh, what I mean about add-ons, I'm talking about stuff that you can add to your Chrome as an extension to help you out with Google Docs. Uh, one of the more famous ones that's really helpful here in the corner is Grammarly. And when it comes to Grammarly, you can actually just Google it. Give Grammarly Inc. And then from there, you can go Grammarly for Chrome and it goes to a Chrome web store and you can add it onto your Chrome extension. It's basically just a helpful way to fix spelling errors, uh, bad sentences, getting a tone for your paper and such. And then having it open means anything you type. You can see what needs to be corrected. Uh, are you being clear with your stuff? Is it engaging to the audience? How's your delivery? So it's really useful. And I recommend to anybody just going on the Chrome web store as well overall and trying to look for like other extensions and such that help you out and make your papers better. And then also when you open up Google Docs, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your file, go to page setup, and here you can actually see how you want your paper to look. So you can go page list or pages. Uh, you can select the whole document or if you're already written stuff down, select certain parts of it. You can say if you want your paper to be in portrait mode or landscape mode, uh, the margins for everything, what type of paper size you're looking for, uh, which helps a lot. So you're printing something out. Not everything's going to be always printed out in letter format. So we have like legal format, executive, uh, different paper sizes, which help a lot. And you can even change the color of your paper. Uh, recommend keeping it uh, simple white, but you, maybe you're trying to be fun and creative. You can do any color you want. And then you can always do set as default or just hit OK after you fix something. See, now I have this. and. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, removing unwanted formatting. So when you're working on Google Documents and you're working on uh, stuff from other websites, you're often going to probably, you know, copy and paste important information to quote it or stuff like that. So one of the issues you have with that is that sometimes you might be grabbing the formatting from one page and putting it in your paper, causing your whole document to look a little skewed and weird. So to fix that, what you're going to want to do is go to Format. And then you're going to go all the way down here to clear formatting and click that. So let's say um, 
let's go back to Grammarly here and show. I'm like, okay, by installing extension, yeah, I want to know that. Control C, Control V, looks pretty normal. I'm gonna highlight that, go to format, clear formatting, and now it turns it back to uh, the original formatting for the paper being Arial 11. There's no color difference, nothing like that. So that helps a lot there. And another thing I want to bring up is if you are ever confused about Google Docs and want to go more in depth about like, okay, how do I do this specific feature, uh, this help tab. Um, funny enough, it helps a lot. <laughs> uh, going to help goes to this little search icon here. I recommend going into Docs help. And it shows up all these little documents and stuff like editing your form, how to use Google Docs, downloading files and such. So it goes into more detail about everything. So let's click how to use Google Docs. And now you have this whole list here of like, okay, here's how to do everything that you're looking for. So if you're ever feeling lost in your documents or want a specific thing, I recommend using the help feature uh, because then you don't have to go out of your way to get help. You have a little premise here and stuff like that. Another thing we're gonna look at is if you go into tools here, uh, two things. So one of the first things I wanna look at is citations. So when you're writing a book report or stuff like that, most professors often want you to cite your sources and such. And students I've seen multiple times go to different websites to do this or they do it from scratch. So let's say you're working on a book report and stuff. Instead of doing that, you open up, you go to tools, hit citations, open up this, and you click the type of citation you need, let's say APA 7th edition, and then we'll do add citation source. And then we're gonna do, okay, let's get a website and access by website and then search the URL. So from there, let's get the URL of this Grammarly extension. Control, copy and paste, hit search. And it's like, okay, there's some stuff that's missing because of course it's not a, a normal article. It's just a little ad saying like, hey, you want to do Grammarly. And then from there, let's say, okay, you can either add the missing information yourself or hit continue. And then, yeah, it sees all the stuff that's missing still. So you can say add citation source. And then from here, you can click on here, you can edit it, delete it. In my case, I'd probably just copy over it, control C, control V, and now you have a cited source. So that helps a lot. And you can do that, or you can do a better method, which is called insert references. And insert references, you just click on that, and it does the references for you in the proper format. So I recommend that instead, but this allows you to do individual sources as well. And now that we're here, let's look at other stuff. Uh, going into tools as well, you can always go into spelling and grammar, word count. But one thing I want to bring up is the dictionary. And when it comes to the dictionary, it's just a simple dictionary. It allows you to put any word you're thinking of. For example, let's do Chrome, and it shows you everything about it. So that just helps when you're looking for a specific reference or a very specific word, like are you using the proper form of this word and such like that. So it's very useful as well, especially for writing reports. And that's about what I'm gonna show you when it comes to Google Docs. There is a lot more as well. However, using this help feature, I'll let you see the rest of it. And now we will move on to Google Sheets. All right, and with Google Sheets, we're just gonna delve a little bit into it. Um, it's gonna be less tips and tricks similar to how I did Google Docs and more of just some cool stuff. I think you can do with Google Sheets to be more organized. Uh, so similar to before, if you go to the template gallery, you have a lot of these cool templates to use for Google Sheets. So go to general. And as a student, some of the biggest ones I recommend using are this one here, the assignment tracker. And clicking on that shows you why. And this one basically just allows you to organize every assignment you have by class, name of assignment, the status on it, how long it's been taking you to work on it, when's, when did you start it, and what date it's due. And so this just helps you get a lot more organized. Uh, especially for busier majors, such as like nursing and stuff, I recommend making an assignment tracker for the whole semester, printing it out, putting it on your uh, dorm room wall or something, and just having everything be a visual aid to what you have to be working on. Another cool thing about this is there other stuff. There's uh, you can make to-do lists, budgeting, monthly budgets, calendars. Um, 
other stuff as well. So the templates just help a lot to have like a basic understanding of what you're trying to work on while you're working on Google Sheets. And then if you open up a blank Google Sheet, start from scratch. Uh, one of the big things I recommend doing is going to this help section, similar to using Google Docs, and you can do training. And now you have all this information about how to use Google Sheets, what to do in Google Sheets. Uh, if you're trying to do specific actions, how those actions can be accomplished. And so I highly recommend using that stuff because it gives you a good understanding of Google Sheets in a more in-depth way from Google. And if you're looking for something a little more in-depth, you can always just do this uh, little cheat sheet here. So just say Google Sheets Cheat Sheets. It's actually right here. Uh, first thing to pop up is from Support Google. And this is also what I showed earlier a little bit, but a more uh, smaller version. So you're able to condense all the, all the information better. And it shows you how to use Google Sheets, each individual item, uh, little shortcuts and functions, like saying average gets you the average amount of num numbers you've been using and stuff, uh, integers for math, matching stuff. So it just gives you this little cheat sheet of little things you can do in Excel. And yeah, looks like we are good to go here. Um, that's about all I want to show you guys today. So thank you for joining in and watching. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.